the uh, regular meeting. <coughs> Again, Vice Mayor, members of the council, town staff, all the members of the public are here to uh, participate. Good to see you. Welcome. Always a pleasure. Um, would you call the roll, please, Russell? Councilmember Jablonski? Here. Councilmember Fiskelli? Here. Councilmember Brightcruz? Here. Vice Mayor McKay? Here. Aaron Nelson? Here. We all stand for the pledge. I love this next item. This is a, <laughs> anytime somebody comes to give us a check, it's, uh, it's an exciting thing in the town of uh, Southwest Ranches. And uh, Christopher Leon with the state of uh, Florida, the uh, Park Services Specialist, if I can get you to come on up. And uh, you've got uh, uh, a check that I uh, hear with um, uh, regards to um, providing uh, some grant assistance with the Country Estates uh, Park. So we're very, uh, very excited, very appreciative. Welcome to the town of Southwest uh, Ranches. And listen, anytime you uh, bring a check, you have priority. We'll uh, <laughs> love to have you anytime. Good to hear. I'll make sure I bring more. <laughs> Great to see you, Christopher. Welcome to the town of Southwest Ranches. Thank you. Talk into that mic a little bit more, if you would. Sure. Um, so the Department of Environmental Protection is proud to administer a program called the Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program. This program is a competitive grant program that funds acquisition or development of lands for public outdoor recreational use. This year, we are very proud that we were able to invest more than $7 million in 137 recreational projects throughout Florida. Today, I have the honor of presenting to you and your community a Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program grant check for $50,000 for Country Estates Park. These funds will pay for development of new multi-purpose sports fields with amenities for softball, soccer, and landscaping. Th congratulations on this grant award. I look forward to joining you again as we celebrate progress on this project. Fantastic, Christopher. Yeah. And as I'm sitting there, I see uh, I see Aster with that big smile on his face and shaking his head. I know what he's saying. Finally, 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 we're going to come down there, uh, Chris, so we can get a uh, we can get a picture. Absolutely. Stand there, we'll get get a picture. If there are any other public speakers tonight, if you could please bring me your card during this hiatus. Okay, this next item, the uh, PACE program. Always good to see uh, Mr. Cohen as uh, well. He's assistant to the uh, county administrator. And uh, Alan, if you don't mind uh, coming up and tell us about this, uh, this PACE program and educate us. And uh, sounds like a pretty cool thing. Uh, thank good you, to Mr. see Mayor. you, by the way. Welcome it's, to Southwest. It's a pleasure. Street. Always a pleasure. Thank you all for uh, having me here. Uh, and it's, it's uh, nice to be here uh, at the city. Uh, as some of you might know, I'm a former city manager. Andy and Russell know that, so 
Uh, that's where my heart often is. Um, what I'm here to talk about is Property Assessed Clean Energy. That's what the acronym PACE stands for. And it, it was a program that was originally devised to focus on energy efficiency projects or renewable energy projects. It's now been expanded as all, uh, in additionally to resiliency projects. For example, impact windows. Uh, what makes this project unique, uh, a homeowner can go to a conventional lending source right now and get a loan, or they can go to a PACE provider. And the difference here is that in, in the first instance, the, home, the property owner, or um, to, to clarify for your listeners, a, uh, both a residential and commercial property owner can go to a bank or they can go to a PACE provider. The big difference is you're, you, the property owner, are borrowing directly from the bank. In the situation with PACE, it is essentially your property that is being assessed the debt, not you as the individual property owner. And so what's unique about that is that when, um, when your credit score is looked at and whatnot, this is not a debt that's included on your credit score because it's not an indebtedness to you. It's counted against the property. In most cases, when you sell your property, the debt would stay with the property and pass on to the next property owner who would continue paying the assessment. And that's how these loans are paid. They're paid through a special assessment that is administered um, you know, by the county um, to the property owner. They sign an agreement agreeing to the special assessment as part of the payback for the program. The, the program uh, funds eligible projects. Uh, um, energy efficiency might be new insulation or a new roof or something to improve the efficiency, a new HVAC system. It could be renewable energy like solar panels. It could be impact windows, as I talked about earlier, and there's a whole range of programs. The county has um, extensive information on our website, which we can make available to your residents as well. Um, there are currently two PACE providers that are actively engaged. We're about to, within the next month, get two more online. They've already been approved by the county board, and we're finalizing the paperwork uh, with them. Uh, we believe in market competition and want to give consumers choice. So a consumer would uh, go to our site, look at the different providers, look at the different program offerings that they have. Some have certain types of fees, others don't. They also have different contractors available. And it's, it's pretty easy to, to go through the application process and get a determination as to whether or not you're eligible. Uh, the county has um, instituted a number of consumer protections in the program to make sure that folks, particularly on the lower end of the income scale, are protected and not taken advantage of. We have anti-price uh, gouging um, uh, language in our ordinance that the PACE providers are obligated to ensure that contractor pricing fits within market norms. Uh, we um, Homeowners uh, cannot just borrow uh, any amount of money that they want in the program. Uh, there's a limit based on their total gross income, and there's a threshold uh, with that to yeah. ensure that folks aren't over leveraging themselves. Um, this is relevant to folks on the lower end that might not have the credit access, but they can get uh, the loan to their property. It's relevant to people on the higher end of the scale that might, might want to save their leverage opportunities for doing something else. And by doing this, they're not reducing their opportunities to, to take on whatever debt they might need for other opportunities. And again, it's both commercial and residential. Uh, I'll, there's plenty that I could say, but I'd, I'd rather hear your questions and, and uh, see what's on your mind. A couple. Uh, a couple. I heard you say uh, two providers, and uh, you anticipate uh, bringing on board four uh, providers with four, regu four total? Four total, correct. Four total. So that's... Uh, that's so we, oh. we already have Y Green, and as a matter of fact, there's a Y Green representative here tonight in case you have any questions for them. Uh, Renew is already on board as well. Florida Pace and Renovate America are two that are going through the legal process right now. Our board has already given approval to them. We just need to uh, sign the dotted line. Renovate, as a matter of fact, just formed their district last week, and now they're going through the final paperwork, and we're finalizing our agreement with Florida Pace. 
And, and I, as a person and an interested, uh, as a homeowner, interested in doing whatever, installing uh, more efficient windows, <laughs> roof, or uh, you know other projects. Do I have uh, would I have an opportunity with regards to these uh, providers or four providers to negotiate with the four providers? How does that uh, process uh, How does that process work? So each of the providers has um, the the rates that they charge uh, for different types of projects. It, it depends as it does with a any other lending institution on the length of uh, the, the loan. Projects that have a longer uh, lifespan, so to speak, take longer to depreciate, will have a lower interest rate attached to it as opposed to the shorter term projects. Uh, they are a little <laughs> higher than what you might see in the average, um, you know, going to a lending institution, uh, but the, you know, that's uh, offset by some of the other advantages to it. Indeed. I mean, it's not for everybody, clearly. Right. No, I hear you. Do all the providers, do they uh, all provide the same uh, services? This, when I say uh, that, that, you know, uh, uh, I want to uh, replace my roof uh, with uh, whatever efficient uh, uh, efficiency considerations, would I be able to negotiate with the four providers? Would they all be able to provide me with a quote on a roof or uh, windows? I mean, is it so uh, the overlapping? Is. is there, you know, one provider that provides a unique uh, service and another one that provides unique services? Are they all overlapping? And, and, and again, my only, my concern is obviously the, uh, the opportunity to negotiate and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and compete for the... Uh, right. Negotiate's an interesting word in this situation. Okay. What, um, so the first answer I want to give you is yes, there's great overlap in what the different providers will fund. Okay. Essentially, they're all pro funding most of the same things. Some of them might be a little more lenient than others in, in saying, yes, this, this applies. You might not think an HVAC system would apply, but it does because if you put it in an Energy Star system, you can save a lot of money uh, in your energy bills, and, and that, that's what uh, uh, applies. Um, when, when you go to each provider, they give you a list of contractors, you get quotes from the contractors. And then, you know, you can get multiple quotes from one provider's contractors, or you can go to two or three different provider's contractors and get quotes, and then decide which one is best for you. You can go through that if you so choose. Okay. And, and there is the overlapping of uh, those uh, services that are, that are offered. It's not a situation where we have a provider that... Uh, you know, the only one that provides, uh, y you know, um, impact windows. Uh, impact windows, right. exactly, for the for the subject of, uh, of, of conversation. No, the, the only, uh, I will tell you that in the past, some providers only focused on residential properties and others only focused on commercial. We're seeing them overlapping now, and the ones that were doing only residential are starting to do both and vice versa. Right. But right. other than that, the types of projects we haven't seen that level of specialization. Gotcha. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. Great. Mayor. Go ahead, Doug. Um, this project, it's a county project? So it, or is it, it a state project? It's, it, it's, uh, it's enabled by state legislation. Uh, so uh, the state of Florida has a statute that allows for PACE districts to be formed and those districts can then issue bonds, and those bonds are what provides the funding for the individual projects. So the, the county is essentially agreeing to be a conduit for these different PACE districts, okay. the providers, to come in and provide their services. We are not running uh, the actual financing. We make no money off of any of the transactions that occur. We are simply administering their presence in our community and ensuring that they comply with rules that we have set up. Okay, so the PACE part of this, it's qualified people that, uh, contractors related to doing this type of work and have met the, all the qualifications related to doing so. Um, I guess what I'm getting at is you don't have a list of items or things like air conditioners, uh, refrigerators, dishwashers, um, insulation, uh, attic fans that residents can buy and install themselves and get a benefit or a discount on? We do not, no. So it's not, it's not something a homeowner can do and participate in on their own. They have to go through one of these qualified contractors to get this benefit. 
Correct, and it typically involves some sort of what we would call a capital project. Okay, so whether it's insulation, roofing, attic fans, whatever it might be, yeah, it, it, it's you can get a loan or you can pay these guys. But if you paid these guys outright for the work, where's the benefit? If you want to, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> How you doing, Rafael Perez, Wagner Energy Fund? Uh, state statute allows an individual, if they want to change your windows, they could do an owner builder permit. So you could come to the town and say, I want to change my windows and do an owner builder. Now, we don't give that property owner any money. They have to do it and they come back to us with the permit and, and so on. Then we'll refinance. So that's one scenario if they're doing it themselves. If they're doing it through a contractor, then we don't pay the contractor until the work is done and then we disperse funding. So okay. a property owner individual could do their windows, they could do certain things. They can't do an attic fan, they can't do So basically, a roof. you all are educated through the state or the county on what energy efficient items there are. They come inspect your house, they say, okay, your AC is 15 years old, you can buy a better HVAC air conditioning system and save you this much energy, you can buy, uh, add two feet of insulation to your attic and you can do this stuff and it's gonna save you this much money on your electric bill, and you can either do the financing and pay for it through the savings of what you're gonna save, and or you can pay for it or you can just pay for it straight. Some individuals could do that. Most individuals, they know they need a roof, so they just say, hey, could you underwrite us? Could you, uh, can I get qualified? And then there's a list of contractors, or they could bring a new contractor. They do the work, remember the city, uh, I'm a general contractor. If I wanted to do work here, I have to provide my license, my general liability, workers comp. They pull a permit. When the work is complete, then we disperse payment to the contractor. And then the next tax cycle gets placed in the tax bill. Okay. I, and Vice Mayor, I appreciate your question because I just learned something tonight. <laughs> okay. All right. I didn't realize that a, an individual homeowner could do their own work. So thank you. Yeah, th thank you for uh, sharing all this with Ms. Mr. Cohen. A uh, couple questions. I was perusing your website earlier today, and uh, one of the things, there was a little caveat that popped up, and that was your mortgage provider may not agree with this. I'm giving you the simplified version of what it says. How, what has been your experience with that, or have so, you had any? So um, we, as, as part of the consumer protections that we set up, we – we're requiring the providers to check off one of three boxes. One of those boxes is to either get the approval of your mortgage provider or get the approval of your mortgage servicer to escrow the PACE assessment. The mortgage providers are hesitant to give their approval because they see PACE as a competing product to their own products. And so th they're not happy about it. The, the mortgage servicers, on the other hand, it's in the best interest of the lender to escrow the payment to protect the asset and ensure that it doesn't be become foreclosed on because the assessment is part of the tax bill. But again, that's one of the three boxes. So we don't see that as uh, being a, a terrible impediment. The other two boxes are demonstrated energy and or insurance savings that are equal to or greater than what the assessment will be. or meeting the threshold limits that I talked about earlier, which is 4% of your gross income or 5% of the fair market value of the house uh, or th the property, excuse me. Um, uh, Follow-up question, second question. Uh, um, based on, obviously it's based on the project of, of what it would be that the homeowner's interested in. Um, what, what is a typical a amortization schedule, 5, 10, 50 years? It, it depends on the project. There is a, 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 a statutory limit, I think, of 30 years. Most of the projects that we've seen have not exceeded 25, but many projects are five years, and it really depends on the nature of the work being done. Um, a, 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 as you all know from your accounting here, some things depreciate much quicker and some things depreciate have a longer is, life. Is that what drives the, the amortization is the yes. depreciation of the, of yes. the item? Okay, so a roof is a roof is going to be it may go stretch out for twenty five years. An AC unit may stretch out for exactly. Five. Exactly. Okay, thank you. It, it, you know, it's like a, a, a you know mortgage early payoff. I mean, if uh, you know they negotiate uh, something for twenty five years and you know come into money some uh, somewhere somehow, is that the, do they have the potential to pay it off uh, early? So one of the things, and as a matter of fact, uh, our, the gentleman from Y Greens might be hearing this for the first time, 
we're looking at making some additional changes in our ordinance, and one of them is to address this specific scenario. Uh, some of the providers have a prepayment penalty if you pay early. Um, we, and, and banks do the same thing. We don't think that prepayment penalty should apply if the government or financial institution is requiring uh, the prepayment to take place. Uh, the FHA has moved more in the direction of supporting the program, but not in 100% of cases. So you might have a property with an FHA mortgage, and they say you need to pay off your PACE assessment to sell your home. And in that case, since they're being forced to, we would say no penalty in that situation. And that's one of the changes that we're contemplating right now. So right now, mm -hmm. they can assess a prepayment penalty. Um, if you decide to pay it off early, you can. Um, you know, the, the, the rationale for doing so, again, the, the, uh, is, is ca case specific because the, the debt is on the property, not the property owner. Uh, so it all depends on the circumstances of the property and the property owner as to why they would want to do that. Uh, listen, the, 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 the proper, yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying, but it okay. still sounds, and I know that you were raised, uh, uh, no, absolutely, come on up <laughs> if, uh, to add, uh, add to it. The difference with our, our program is that we give property owners options. If somebody chooses to have the penalty, they'll have a better rate. If somebody chooses that they're not going to live throughout the, and they're going to pay this off, then they could choose to add uh, 1.5 points on the contract, and they have no penalty. So we're giving property owners options. Some people will stay the whole time. I know our rates compared to the competition is almost a whole percentage point less. So I think giving options to property owners and let them decide is the best way. We've done in, in between Miami-Dade and Broward, 4,500 projects for $100 million. In Broward County, we joined in August, and 10 cities joined first before the, the county program, and we've already done I just pulled the numbers, 871 projects for 17 million, and we have another 700 projects for 13 million in, in progress currently. So we believe that the best option is to let the property owner decide if they want a better rate because they know they're going to live throughout, you know, they're, they're going to be in this home for the next 20 years. Let them get a better rate if they choose. If they don't, so we're giving the, pro the public the option. What determines the rate, the interest rate? How does that the determine? the interest rate? Remember, these are investors that provide. So the interest right. is tied to the LIBOR swap okay. and what the rate. We th we have securitized a couple times. We got a double A rating. We will get a th a third A on it, but it, it's just it's such a new product. So the industry still doesn't you know the market doesn't still believe that. I believe the more we do projects, the more the in the the rate will go down. Mayor, if I can jump in, go ahead, though. just a little. Um, the property owner's property, you said it's attached to the property, so it's not really on the homeowner, supposedly. But the truth of the matter is, I've never heard anybody doing a loan of any kind and not writing somebody's credit score or their ability to pay it back. So w how does that work? So the state statute has a standard. We have a higher standard. We're almost all the same. I'm speaking for every group. So we make sure that property owners have 10% equity in their property, paid their property taxes on time for three years of the period of ownership, be current on their mortgage, not be in bankruptcy, and no notice of default for the last three years. A couple years back when we started this, the investors, because the statue's here and the investors were here, the investors see that there was not, there was not a need to, to have um, a property or not be current for three years on their mortgage. So the delinquency rate on this is 0.5, and the default rate is 0.1. The delinquency rate in, in, in Miami-Dade is like six or seven. The delinquency rate in Broward County is 3%. So, uh, it's really, really low, and a lot of people are taking advantage. I would say 85% of our projects are for windows and roofs because their insurance is so high, and this is a way for them to lower their insurance. Their insurance savings, in a lot of cases, surpasses the financing. Additionally, since we don't pay the contractor to the work is 100% complete, it's peace of mind. Right now, if you want to do your windows, 50% up front, 40% on delivery. I'm a general contractor, so I've lived this. So. Uh, you know, it's peace of mind, yes. So you don't run a homeowner's credit, you don't do a credit check on a homeowner. We, we have to do it initially to determine that they're current on their mortgage and they're not in bankruptcy. Is there another way? If there's another way, we would No, no, I understand what you're saying, but I'm saying what if they have a credit score of 500? That doesn't matter, sir. Okay, wouldn't you matter. All right. I mean, I could still, you know, at least in my culture, we always pay our mortgage first. That's number one. So No, no, clearly I understand that, yeah. but some people have other issues or litigation or other things that happen that, the, this, the, the scenario I like to always use is there's three options on the table. You go to your bank, you get a line of credit. 
Well, guess what? If you lose your job, the line of credit, you'll lose your house. If you go get a credit card, you're paying 23%. If you, if you use PACE and for some reason you lose your job for a year and you don't pay that tax bill, it becomes a, a certificate. So guess what? Somebody buys it. Everybody gets paid, the city, the county, everybody gets their money. And then you get to fight another day and hopefully the next year you get a job. Nobody's going to lose their house for a $1,200 assessment. So our average assessments are about $1,200 to $1,500 a year. So a little bit more than $100 a month. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Andy? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Alan, thank you for coming in. It's good to see you. It looks Same like here. Bertha's not working you hard enough. <laughs> Keith, you have a couple questions. Yeah, just, just one question. Oh, I'm or sorry, Andy. A couple of questions, just, just to be very clear. Keith, yeah, I'll, I'll be just a minute. Uh, this is a county program. It is in place. The town would be included by default unless we opt out. Is that correct? Correct. So in, unless you specifically opt out, you're included. Okay. And when it, when is that date? Uh, it's sometime next month. It's okay. coming I up. Thought it was, yeah, I thought it was in what? October, early October. October 14th. Okay. He's tracking it closer okay. than I am. And how long is this running for? How long is this good? In perpetuity and, you know, uh, okay. in, in, unless for some reason we decide it's not working for folks. Uh, and then there are termination clauses and allowances. Any financing arrangements that have already been arranged would continue, but no new ones would be written at that point. Okay. okay. And and I just want to emphasize that there's absolutely no expense to the municipality. The only expense that we're incurring is administrative to, you know, administer and monitor the program. Uh, there's no money out of your pocket at all. That's where I was going next. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, I just wanted a clarification because several council members have contacted me about the program and there's only so much information online. W when it relates to the four PACE districts, is a district the entire Broward County or is it beyond Broward County? Actually, in, in one or more cases, the district is the entire state. And in other cases, the providers form specific districts to cover certain geographic areas. Okay, but the four in Broward County would cover every municipality in Broward County? That have agreed to uh, participate in the program. So, so far, as of tonight, I think we have 15 or 16 cities that have said yes. There are three cities that already have PACE programs up and running. They've opted out, and we haven't heard anything from the remaining cities. And my guess is most of them are just going to let the deadline lapse, and they'll by default opt in. So if a resident wants a new roof, they can contact or look at the fees for all four uh, PACE providers. They could choose one or more, and they say, we need a roof. And if they didn't want to do a builder owner, as uh, Vice Mayor McKay said, they would get a list of 10, 15 roofers that they could call and, and potentially negotiate a dollar amount of a contract. And then PACE, what the Y Green does, is provide the financing mechanism to pay that contractor. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. And and the question. E except I don't know about ten or fifteen contractors, but how, the, how many? There will be a list of how many average on average. It depends on most property owners. Once in a while, I get somebody that does go through fifteen of them, but we have a limit. We have a thousand contractors, you know. So people choose it, and if there's somebody that they don't they don't like the what we have because they have the the local guy here they've been working for thirty years. We come, we certify them, we train them, we make sure they're licensed, their docs are in order, and then they can be part of the program. Okay, so the the way that the PACE provider is earning its income is as a bank, uh, the interest rate that they're charging for the loan for the uh, the product. Uh, what we didn't understand, because I asked, what is that in, in layman's terms, an average interest rate? Is it 10%, 5%, 12%? Okay, so we've seen interest rates Roughly between six to eight percent, depending on the length or, or term of the financing. Um, solar panels, on average, are a little uh, typically on the higher end of that range, and then uh, all other types of projects will range depending on the, the term. So, it, 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 you mentioned before a LIBOR swap, which would be a fluctuated uh, rate. That's what he said. Right. Yeah. So, but it's not. It, it seems like it is a fixed rate, so that a property owner could determine every year how much their interest is and, and principal is 
on uh, the uh, the when, loan. It's when, when you sign. No, it's fixed because if it was based on the library swap, right. how about if the rates go up next year? Well, that, would, that's, yeah. that's why I didn't understand. It's it, it's fixed. Once when, when I when they asked me about the rates, the rates could change every month. Remember, the market moves. So every month or every couple of months, the, the market can move and the rates change. But once that property owner signs a finance agreement, they're fixed for the 20, 30, 20 years. That that's they, they that's what the question was. Okay. So the resident, when they do sign, gets a fixed rate, 6 8%, and then it's fully amortized, and that fully amortized uh, portion goes on their ad valorem tax bill uh, and gets paid annually. And, and to, to the, the PACE assessment, is determined and that pace assessment stays the same for the length of the financing. Okay. Because it's on the ad valorem tax bill, is any of that tax deductible? Good question. It's, it's a non ad valorem. It's so a non ad valorem. It's not taxable. It's not uh, tax deductible. Well, I, I, wow. I, 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 uh, I'm not a tax professional, but if you look at section 17 of the IRS code, it says for a local benefit, if you do something, you could get a local benefit, and the state statute says this is a compelling state interest. So if you do your roof, I benefit because the risk pool goes down. I always say talk to your tax professional. We never say this. That's the best route, so everybody, everything is safe. The, the two more questions that I'm being asked. And, and uh, I, I, just on that, the county hasn't even touched that question because of the, the, mine, the potential minefields on that. So uh, I just want to be clear. The answer you heard was not from the county, but from, <laughs> from, from Wyatt Green. Okay. My answer was from the IRS code, okay. section 17. No, and, and we're not yes, here sir. to debate. I'm just clarifying. And, and the, the, the other two questions <laughs> that I'm getting from this side of the room is sometimes you buy a solar panel or an air conditioning, you can get a, um, an incentive or dollars back. Uh, does the property owner get the dollar back, or does that go to reduce the amount of the loan? That's a good question. Yeah, so uh, right now for um, solar panels, there's a 30% credit by the federal government that was extended to 2020. So anybody that buys solar panels could get a credit from the federal government. Um, the person receives that. So they choose to, that's, that's their rebate, that's their credit, that's their personal uh, income taxes. So they receive that. Now there is some rebates with FPL, with ACs. Usually the contractor at the time, what I've seen in invoices, your air condition is 7,000. 500 FPL rebate. They write it there, and they and then they make the price 6,500. But once again, that's a negotiation between the property and the contractor. We're the financing vehicle. We protect. We look. We look at every invoice. We don't pay to the work is 100% complete. And once again, we are an option. If somebody doesn't want to use this program, which a lot of people sometimes don't because they don't like the rate, that's great. And the final question that that I got from this side of the room was um, lean priority. And if a resident fails to pay their, their ad valorem tax bill and the property goes up for auction, um, what happens to the PACE lien that's on the property as well? Well, and that's an interesting question. In most cases, the PACE assessment is not paid off because it's still an ongoing obligation of the property. So it's different than some of the other indebtedness attached to that property. But, but I so, so a mortgage yeah. would have to be paid off the PACE assessment would not have to be paid off. Go ahead. I don't know. The, the, the state statute says, yeah. Mr. Attorney, the state statute says that a PACE assessment has the same dignity as a county tax or an assessment. So if some reason, for some reason, somebody defaults, the bank takes possession, and a new owner gets it, then the, it, it rides with the property. That property owner, when they buy it, it doesn't just get dissolved. No, I, I hear what you're saying, but that, that leads me to another question. A, a bank, uh, we have a lot of them in the town, forecloses on a piece of property, we have municipal liens on the property, et cetera. Um, is the bank paying the monthly PACE bill? It's, it's a yearly, so they would yearly? just pay that one assessment. Remember, there's a roof on it. That roof is valuable. So if, let's say you do $20,000 and your assessment is $1,500 and you foreclose because of $1,500, I guess or the rest of the taxes, but the $1,500, the bank will have to pay fifteen hundred dollars. He sells the house to you, and now you carry with you carry on with, or you you negotiate the price and you settle the assessment. Uh, so the the short answer is yes. The bank, as the controlling entity of the property, <laughs> would pay the assessment as they would pay all the other taxes. In the ca in the case where there is a foreclosure, and let's say there's a backlog of two years, that two year backlog would have to get paid off, but the future payments would still uh, be paid 
on the same assessment schedule. Did that bring clarity to tax, your question, Tax counselor? certificate that uh, would be issued for taxes that are not paid, right? Just, just like any other tax certificate that uh, would be uh, issued for taxes not paid. Right. Or assessment not paid. Right. It's all the same category. I'm good? What, what okay. the, would the obliga obligation of the new homeowner in that uh, scenario, would they have an option to uh, you know, pay it off uh, early, or I guess they would just assume whatever the conditions were at the time that uh, – the financing was negotiated honestly sir I don't know the answer to that but I assume that if I'm buying a home and it has an assessment the bank by law has to disclose that and me as a buyer I'm gonna say let's just dissolve it um, all the assessments and all their agreements are placed in the tax rolls so the title agent will see that and say this is what it is and it'll be disclosed so at that time the buyer and their agent and their lawyers will determine what's the best avenue for them to uh, inherit it or assume it or pay it off when they when they take possession of the bank with the bank paid off with the conditions that were negotiated by the yeah. first home you know you've there. actually I, I you've raised an interesting question that I'm going to bring back to our legal folks and ask them about because I could see where a new homeowner in that situation uh, it'd be because of the off. interest Absolutely. rates sure. right. yeah they Absolutely. might want to pay it off early mm -hmm. so we'll Absolutely. take a look at that thank you. you okay any other uh, questions Fantastic. Listen, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, if we don't do uh, anything, that means that, uh, was it October 14th, pull, uh, October 14th, I think? Yes. Yeah, it would become uh, part of this uh, this program. But um, appreciate, uh, appreciate. Take an action of any kind? I, I, don't, I don't think that we have. I'm only if you opt out. It's, uh, I get the impression that the only action we have to take if you opt out. If we don't do anything, we're already ma uh, right. part of the program, effective right. October 14th. Correct. Okay. Okay, and if, if you have any other questions, uh, Andy or Russell have my contact information. Uh, happy to come back out if need be as well. Great. Alan, okay. thank you very much. Thank Good you, to Mayor. See you. Appreciate uh, both of your time. Gentlemen. Yeah, thank thanks you for, very much. Appreciate thank it. you for answering all of our questions. Have a good evening. Uh, uh, Council, if you don't mind, I know there's a lot of uh, personal assets here, and it becomes an expensive uh, proposition for those that are paying for the representation. And if it's okay with you before public comment, can we move items 10 and uh, 11 uh, before uh, before public comment is that okay is that okay with everybody can I get a motion in uh, in a second so I can we can vote 10 and 11 10 and 11 make a motion to move 10 and 11 uh, to the front okay motion to move uh, 10 and 11 uh, prior to public uh, comment I'm sure there isn't any public comment about that or anybody have any objections um, call the question please Russell <coughs> Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Councilmember Fiskelli? Yes. Councilmember Breikers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number 10. Mayor, uh, items number 10 and 11 are on the ag uh, agenda. Uh, both are waivers of flat. Um, while they were advertised fully in accordance with uh, the town code in Florida law, they were inadvertently not listed on our current agenda as quasi-judicial, but they are. So we will treat them as such for purposes uh, of this meeting. Um, so um, uh, the rules of quasi-judicial procedure are in the town's uh, code. It's actually um, in, in books in the back of the room. Um, if anyone would like them read into the record uh, for ADA purposes or otherwise, we are happy to do so. If not, we will proceed with the quasi-judicial proceeding um, and swear in anyone who wishes to speak on items 10 or 11 on the agenda and then Russell can read in uh, the first resolution. So seeing no objection, uh, Russell, if you could have anyone who wishes to speak on items 10 or 11, please stand uh, and raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you, Russell. If you could please read in resolution number 10. A resolution and final order of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving waiver of plat application number WP-14-16 to subdivide approximately 4.76 net acres of property into two lots of 2.38 net acres apiece, generally located on the west side of Appaloosa Trail, approximately one quarter mile south of Sterling Road, and described as the north one half of the north 324.17 feet of tracks 27 and 28 in section 2, Township 51 South, Range 40 East, Everglades Sugar and Land Company Subdivision, according to the plat thereof, recorded in Plat Book 2, 
page 39 of the Dade County, Florida Public Records, less the east 20 feet of Track 28, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to execute any and all documents necessary to properly effectuate the intent of this resolution, providing for recordation and providing an effective date. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Uh, Council, do you wish to proceed without the applicant being present? Sure. <laughs> no. I was going to say. I mean, I think the applicant should be here. Absolutely. What happens if we have some questions? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Representatives here, right? So it, it, it's up to I the council. What do we, I mean, it's, it's rare that the applicant wouldn't show up for their the item. Representatives here, correct? Or no? No? You're oh, you're 11. Oh, you're 11. Okay. So it's up to the council if you wish to proceed with this item at this time or make a motion to table it. Uh, listen, that's easy for me. You know, and, and, and yeah, there are some questions. To, you know, I'll make a motion to table. Motion and a uh, second to uh, table. Well, uh, yeah, let's do it to a time and date certain if you don't mind. So we no, I don't have a problem with that. The advertisement, Russell. Well, sep that September 29th would be the next. Uh, no, no, the next quasi judicial meeting. Oh, well, we can do that every time. It'd be the first meeting in October then. Is that when you come? It's every. Wow. Can we come to have that happen? That's the only thing I can think of. We'll do a second yeah. meeting tomorrow night. We'll do this tomorrow night. <laughs> you know what? You might be right. Sorry. They won't be happy. Can anybody call and see if they can get it? <laughs> 13th? October 13th, that's it? It's October 13th at 7 p.m. Okay. Uh, I amend my motion to October 13th, 7 p.m. Thank you, Steve. Seconder? Second. Okay. Motion and uh, second to move it to October, to table it and move it to October 13th uh, meeting. Call the question, please, Russell. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Councilmember Fisichelli? Yes. Councilmember Breakers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number 11. Thank you, Russell. If you could please read in item number 11. A resolution and final order of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving waiver of plat application number WP-1316 to subdivide approximately 2.71 net, net acres of property for the purpose of providing an access strip to an adjoining lot of record, generally located on the east side of Hancock Road, approximately 1,000 feet north of Loray Road, and described as the north one-half of Track 25 and Section 3, Township 51 South, Range 40 East of the Everglades Sugar and Land Company subdivision. According to the plat thereof, recorded in Plat Book 2, page 39 of the Dade County, Florida Public Records, less the north 267 feet and less the west 30 feet, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to execute any and all documents necessary to properly effectuate the intent of this re resolution, providing for recordation and providing an effective date. Thank you. I see the applicant present, uh, Jane from police, and more importantly than Jane, and she's hiding in the back, for anyone who didn't see her, is Elizabeth, who uh, worked at the town for a very, very long time. Motion to approve. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Uh, 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 Jane, if you could just please state your name and address for the record that you've been sworn in, then I'll turn it over to Jeff to do a presentation. Jane Storms, Police Land Surveyors, 5381 Nob Hill Road, Sunrise, Florida, for the applicant. I have been sworn. It's good to see everyone again. Likewise. Thank you, Jane. Uh, Jeff, could you please uh, enter the staff report for the record? So entered. Um, <laughs> we, ha we have uh, a very simple uh, waiver of plat here. We've got uh, the property owner that has over five acres with access to Luray Road who needs uh, for uh, medical purposes secondary access to Hancock. Now, the fact that they need it for medical purposes is really irrelevant, but uh, I'm, I'm just kind of adding that in there. That is the motivation here. They want secondary access, and what they did is they acquired a property, the intervening property uh, between them and Hancock. That property is 2.7 acres. They are slicing off a piece of that as a driveway to their, to their, uh, their home, which is uh, the Lurie Road property, and then uh, they are going to sell the remainder of the property um, without that little strip. So they're really just transferring a quarter of an acre from one property to another so they can have an access driveway. 
Uh, they could have done it through an easement and not even gone through the way for a flat process, but uh, being an attorney, um, they, they wanted to make sure that it was airtight and that there would never be an issue with, uh, with an easement uh, in, in the future owner. So uh, the net result of this is that the 5.35 acre property upon which the, the Parles live is going to increase to almost 5.6 acres in size, and the 2.7 acre property that is the donor property of this driveway is going to be decreased in size to about 2.47 acres. So all the all code requirements are met. Uh, the drainage district has uh, is already processing the permit or pos possibly issued the permit uh, for the culvert crossing for this driveway on Tulare. Uh, we don't have any uh, issues or uh, recommended conditions other than the standard condition. Uh, and that Elizabeth uh, come up here and do the presentation for the applicant. And that concludes my report. Thank you, uh, Jeff. Before I turn it over to the applicant, has any council member had any ex parte communication concerning this matter? Seeing none, Jane, do you have anything else to add? Seeing none, uh, Mayor, turn it over to the public for uh, testimony, and then uh, we'll close the public hearing. Thank you. Any member of the public wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, public comment closed. Mayor, over to you for deliberation. Thank you, Keith. Council? Motion to approve. <coughs> second. Motion is second to approve. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, call the question, please, Russell. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisk Kelly? Yes. <coughs> Council Member Breakers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Nice seeing you. Good to see you all. Okay. Item number five, public comment. Mayor, there's uh, three speakers tonight. Each speaker is allowed to speak for uh, three minutes each. The order is uh, David, uh, Newell, and D. Thank you. My name is David hey, hey, David, David, listen, listen, listen. Yes. I, I mean, the, the podium's distracting. Well, that's okay. You leave the podium there and All take right. it out, and then you can certainly face the other direction. All I have right. a problem. But the other thing is, too, remember, you're Yeah. Here. I'm supposed to address you as well. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks. Well, we have a lot of flexibility. My name is David Kaczynski. I'm a candidate for District 4 for Town Council. Uh, I moved to the ranches in 1997. I came here for law school. Uh, in 2007, I purchased my home. After I purchased my home, I have organized a local neighborhood crime watch, and I've been elected to the board of directors of my homeowners association. Uh, I'm also an attorney, licensed by the Florida Bar. Part of my responsibilities are bringing parties together that are in disagreement. I've also litigated cases, I've won cases, I've lost cases. In each case, I've treated my opponent with respect. So I bring that if elected to the council. I, uh, I've also, if I'm elected, what I would fight to do is I will fight changes to our zoning, bring more green open space to our town, and I will also fight our traffic problems. It breaks my heart when I'm driving down the road and I see an animal run over. I think another one of God's creatures has been taken from us. We've got to fight for traffic problems in the town, and I will fight for that if elected. I will fight to keep our taxes low, and I'll fight to ensure that our tax dollars are conservatively spent. I will do that with the temperament of a councilman. My name is David Kaczynski. I'd like to ask for your vote in November. Thank you so much. Don't tell him who's next. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, uh, listen, believe me. Uh, who's next? We'll our just rotate it. Our, th our third speaker is Deep <laughs> Schroeder. Right. Here he comes. Noel's up. Here he is. And that concludes public comment. The next item, <laughs> item number, you're up, Newell.
Again, I'd like this council to take a real hard look at the budget. There is so much in there that does not need to be in there to raise the rate as high as you are going. This is the largest rate increase this council has ever put forth against the residents of our town. It is not necessary. There is a lot of waste that's in there. Well, let's call it little tiny puddles of money that some of them are actually large lakes. You need to actually read the budget instead of like Johnny Carson used to do and put it to his forehead and make a decision. Because that's what it appears you've done. You've rubber stamped it. There is no rhyme or reason for the amount of fluff and the amount of excess baggage that is in there and no constraints on any of the programs being put there. You have excess engineering, excess uh, surveys where you're looking at where all the mailboxes are, the rocks, the little trees, the bushes. You're getting surveys that say all of those wonderful, nonsensical, stupid things when all we want is the roads paved. We don't want the other dribble. And it's your responsibility to find out where the dribble is and cut it out. So I say to you, read the budget. As I was told during the break, well, there's one more budget hearing. Well, guess what, people? 99% of any cuts are done on the first one, if not at the workshop. There is no going to be. You're going to rubber stamp it come the next hearing on the 29th, and that's going to be it. Thank you. I don't know. That's a pretty hard act to follow. <laughs> uh, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, Andy, Keith. D. Schroeder, 5501 Thoroughbred Lane. I just would like to remind everybody and the residents um, that we have an election coming up in November. Please execute your right to vote. Um, I received a uh, email from the President's Council here in the town of Southwest Ranches that we will be having a debate. And this will be held October 17th at 7 p.m. right here in our own town hall. Um, to hit on something that Noel Hollingsworth was talking about our budget, I as a girl love to spend money. So, you know, Normally, I would like to do this, but if there's any way to shave some of this off, and there looks like there is some room to do some work to take some of this off to maybe bring it down a little bit, I'm sure the residents would greatly appreciate it. As for myself running for a seat for District 4, I'm asking for everybody's support. I've been in this town for 30-plus years. I've been involved with the, uh, the conception of forming our town. When Broward County told us that we were going to be either annexed by Pembroke Pines or Davie. So the fight was hard, but we did it. And I'm sure there are no regrets. I have none. I love my little town. I've also worked with BSO when we had our COP program. I did that for two years and had that up. I've sat on several boards. I've been involved in all the events in the town, brought my children in, who have raised two girls here and grandchildren now, and even the littlest one was out there planting trees with December. So I've tried to stay on top of everything. I will continue to do this tirelessly with no remorse whatsoever. This is my town also. I love the way it looks. I want to preserve our type of lifestyle so I'm asking for your support. Come November, don't forget, 
vote Denise Schroeder. Thank you. Okay, that concludes public uh, comment. Item number six, board reports. Any members of any of our committees and boards? Any comments? Seeing none, item six is, oh, I'm sorry, Aster. Listen, I love that uh, smile that was brought to your face with that sure. check and what that, can result from it, absolutely. Good. Yes, Aster 9, 5480 Southwest 178th Avenue. I just want to say i um, very grateful to see the $50,000 added to that park because we have put, uh, the foundation has earmarked 20000 for that project also. And it has been a long fight, maybe about 10 years we've been working for this, and to see it come at least near fruition is great. The other thing is, since we need more money for do, to do more things for the rest of the parks, I'm asking your support and to spread the word that on the uh, 12th of November, we're having our second annual Classic Car Show, Ride for the Ranches. So I'd like to see everybody coming out to Ride for the Ranches. Thank you very much. Thanks, Aster. Always a pleasure to see you. All right, that concludes uh, board reports. Item number seven, council member comments. You're good? Ready? I got to say something, you know that, <laughs> you know that, right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, just uh, two, uh, I think, very quick comments. Um, one is I wanted to uh, thank Keith uh, for uh, his help in uh, arranging the program we had last night. I want to thank Katie Edwards for her uh, participation. Um, we had a great uh, opportunity here to really learn about uh, sober homes recovery uh, residences and uh, really get a good understanding of what we can do, what we can't do. And we're going to continue to work on that, the things that we can do. And um, uh, we really heard last night the residents' concerns. And, uh, and I'm also appreciative of all the residents that showed up um, and, and really were very positive in their comments and, and how, they, uh, how they addressed us. So it was, a great, it was a great opportunity. I thought it went really well. It was a good exchange. And um, and I just appreciate Keith uh, and, and all the work that went into getting that set up, and Andy as well, but uh, I think that was uh, mostly Keith, so thank you. Um, the other thing, I, I just got to say quickly, I'm not going to make a big deal about it, but uh, you know, I know, I know, I'll just speak for myself, but I know there's others up here that we read this budget forward and backwards. Um, there, there's not a line in this budget that I have not read, and, um, and I do take some offense to the indication that we don't look at it and we just gloss over it and we don't, um, I read that thing, it takes me a couple of weeks to go through that book, and I go through that book. And so, um, you know, I understand that we, you know, there are differing opinions on what we should spend money on and what we should not spend money on, but um, I go over that, I know others go over that, and, and we have conversations, detailed conversations with Andy, we have detailed conversations with Marty. Um, we, we've, we've discussed it um, over the last several months, we've been discussing it. So. Um, it, it is a difficult year um, because there is an increase there, but, uh, um, but I don't want anyone in town to think that this is not, this is just being glossed over and not looked at. This is being looked at by a lot of people in a lot of detail. So uh, um, I just want to make that point. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, and, uh, and ditto. I know how much time and effort is uh, put into this process, <coughs> how important it is uh, to everybody up here that we have an accounting of everything. Uh, spent to the uh, penny and, uh, you know, a commitment and a, and a confirmation that it is being appropriated uh, uh, properly, appropriately, and uh, these are important, uh, you know, issues and projects with regards to this town uh, moving, uh, moving forward. I appreciate that. Just uh, real quickly, Andy and I went over at the invitation of Mayor of uh, Miramar to discuss and uh, update uh, the current uh, status of uh, waste uh, hauling. <coughs> it was a constructive uh, conversation, uh, debate, um, and, uh, you, know, you know, potentially this evolving monopoly as a result of what waste management is doing and some of the companies that they are acquiring. So it was, uh, it was a constructive uh, 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 conversation. It'll be uh, very interesting to see how it, uh, how it evolves. Um, I get the impression it uh, sounds to me, and Andy, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that 
uh, to preserve, um, you know, these uh, these rates. And, and remember, there is uh, an issue with Department of Justice and this uh, this evolving uh, monopolistic uh, scenario for uh, waste management that um, uh, is is part of this uh, agreement that the municipalities will have an opportunity at uh, uh, um, approving another five-year uh, agreement with the uh, – my time is up. <laughs> you got – can I, right, can I get a cup? <laughs> <laughs> can I just – I'll be done in just yeah, one minute, but thank you. Robert's rules. <laughs> you can have one. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> that is very, very good. So I anticipate uh, most of everybody that was there to take advantage of that and uh, preserve this, uh, this uh, price structure and commitment for another five years, and then the fund's going to be, uh, begin. And again, it has uh, everything to do with, uh, with options. When it becomes, uh, you know, with regards to uh, uh, disposal, that's probably uh, the issue. Uh, finding service providers to provide the service, there are some options, but when it comes to the disposal component, uh, the options are uh, limited, and that's uh, potentially where it becomes uh, uh, problematic. And who knows, somewhere down the line, maybe uh, the town of Southwest Ranches could be involved in that discussion simply because of uh, what exists out west and the assets that uh, uh, currently owned and available by uh, Broward County. So I just want to let you uh, let you know, and uh, we'll see where that goes. And again, I appreciate uh, your time. Uh, Andy, and uh, as always, uh, uh, Keith's uh, feedback. Okay, that concludes our uh, council member comments. Item number eight, legal comments. Uh, sure, Mayor, I have uh, just a few. Um, yesterday there was mediation in uh, the town runway case between the property owner and the, uh, um, the resident who was trying to close off the runway. Uh, the town was there. Rod uh, provided uh, representation for the town with uh, assistant uh, counsel there. And from what I was told, Rod, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I was told that the party settled in that they're allowing the um, uh, fencing of the person who wanted to fence their property to the same distance as the fence that was built in the property that has a pool next to them. I know Vice Mayor McKay understands what I'm talking about because I've walked that runway with him a hundred times. So if you can explain it better than that, uh, please do. Can't explain it better, but unfortunately that's a little far, but it's okay when it clears. When those trees get cleared, it'll be okay. So um, that case has been settled and uh, the property owners are happy. We were really taking a tertiary role in that, telling them to uh, work it out, but we were required to attend mediation and to provide input to Judge Speckler as well. So uh, that matter was concluded yesterday. Um, this afternoon was a little bit of a, a surreal afternoon. Uh, and I just want to uh, tell everyone publicly, you know, um, Andy had gone with uh, the mayor in the morning to uh, this uh, waste management meeting and we're very cordial with everyone. So we were, we were surprised later in the day uh, to receive a, a phone call from Davey concerning uh, fire services. Um, I've kept you guys up to date as much as possible about the negotiations and really where we stalled out uh, probably four or five months ago at this point, probably four months ago, um, really centered on, on Davey's position that uh, they wanted an automatic escalator of 5% annually for the length of the contract. The town and the town council's position has always been we're not agreeing to automatic escalators. Um, if you can show us what the increase is, CPI, insurance, uh, equipment, whatever, you know, potential the, the, the increase is, we're happy to discuss that with you, similar to our police contract, which is not automatic, but it has a cap and, and an ability for them to prove to us what the increase is. So uh, when, when talks failed, um, and, and even prior to that, we met with uh, Davey, and they told us, you know, please, we're here to, to assist you, and we're here for you. And, and we made it clear that, listen, this is a long-term commitment. We are going to reach out to uh, other providers to try to get uh, competition to make sure that the town residents are being uh, provided the best services possible. Uh, when that occurred, we reached out to uh, BSO. Um, I sent uh, BSO our wish list. Um, doubt they'll ever agree to it, but we, we did send BSO our wish list. 
and then uh, when talks failed with uh, with or or slowed down, I guess we reached a stalemate uh, with Davy. Um, I believe it was last week. Marty got an email back um, from their finance department saying that they don't have the personnel or the time. If I'm mis par paraphrasing it, tell me uh, the personnel or time to get Marty the material that he needed to justify the increase in the fee. Uh, that was the last time we heard anything from them. So at that point. I uh, cordially said, well, we need to explore all options in case this uh, goes south. So I spoke to Andy, and, and I said, you know what, let me reach out to Sam Gorin at Pines and send a cordial email saying, listen, politics aside, you know, issues aside, um, if a layperson were to look at a map of our area, they would figure out some way of saying Pines to the western boundary, Davie to the eastern boundary, the town would probably have the best coverage ever because of the location of, of the possible uh, stations that could be on the east and west side. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, Sam Gorin said he would speak to Charlie Dodge. Charlie Dodge then reached out to Andy and said, hey, you know, are you guys really serious about this? Uh, and Andy, I don't believe has actually gotten back to him yet. Um, he was waiting to hear if the council would even want to entertain such a notion. But uh, Andy, am I correct? You hadn't gotten back yeah, to I, Charlie. I actually, I responded to him. I told him that I would be in touch. He wanted to be certain, and, and I'm sure that their commission wanted to be certain, that our, our council was was on board and was, was willing to entertain those discussions. <coughs> and, and as I've done your individual briefings this week, I have touched base with all of you on this and uh, certainly reached consensus on, on exploring options. So um, we were exploring options while still negotiating in, in full good faith to try to see if we could resolve the open issues. Uh, really, the, the escalator is the remaining open issue with the town of Davie. Um, apparently, something must have happened within the, the week that, that I'm not really aware of. I don't know if any of us are aware of. But uh, today, we got a telephone call with uh, Davey. Uh, uh, Andy did. And I don't know if this is going to go further or what's going to tra transpire of it, but I want to disclose it that Andy got a phone call from uh, the town administrator of Davey uh, advising him that uh, he didn't feel that we were negotiating in, in good faith because of the fact that we it seemed that we were exploring other options. So as a result, he didn't feel that that was negotiating in good faith. And as such, uh, they were not going to seek an extension of fire service, and they were done with providing the town with fire service after this contract expires. So um, that is the latest on that. Uh, since that, that occurred, um, I believe that uh, some of their council members have touched base with both our mayor and vice mayor, I believe, um, concerning this matter. A lot of misinformation going back and forth about their side. Uh, we've now heard stories that mayor, maybe the mayor of Pembroke Pines may have said something to Jest and what to one of their commissioners, and that might have escalated it even, even further. Um, so this is yet to, to be seen what occurs. Um, but on the positive side, um, because of the fact that we reached out to BSO initially just to get a price comparison, I mean, you're spending almost $3 million a year. You want to make sure that you're still getting the, the best bang for your buck. Uh, we reached out to BSO and, and Ron uh, Gunsberger, who, who um, you know, uh, had met with uh, Chief Bennett, um, I believe yesterday the, the BSO folk met uh, just preliminarily uh, to see what services were needed, um, uh, was extremely cordial and uh, said that uh, BSO would love to provide the town with several options uh, for fire service and that they're extremely interested. So we have a, a year to, to figure this out, but uh, we, we've been very happy with Davey. You know, they provide excellent service. We were uh, in incredibly surprised um, by the phone call we received. We, we hope we can resolve our issues, but if not, the town is well covered and has other uh, potential options that will fully be explored. Andy, I, I think that's about it on, on that one. Well, Keith, I think that was a very thorough summation of, of, of certainly where, I find, where we find ourselves. And we'll continue to s explore all options to, uh, to provide the best coverage and protection for the town, for the residents, at, at, at a fair price. That's it, Mayor. No further public comment. And uh, just to add a little bit uh, to that, uh, Keith, I did uh, reach out to uh, Mayor Paul and just before the meeting started. She did call me uh, back. And uh, Keith is absolutely right. You know, with regards to this uh, 
misinformation and the things that were, uh, you know, um, thrown out uh, there allegedly uh, one-sided. You know, I, I, I assured her that there was two sides of the story, and I assured her that uh, there was a lot of uh, back and forth uh, communication, but we would be glad to come to the table and sit down so that uh, we can make sure that we understand, you know, what was discussed, the accuracy of the uh, discussions and the, uh, and the concerns, and the reason, obviously, that uh, we were put in a position where we had to uh, take a look at uh, it's some of uh, some of those uh, some of those options. Uh, she was very uh, receptive, a little cold initially, but uh, once we the, the discussion uh, continued and having uh, some intimate uh, knowledge of uh, those discussions via Keith and uh, Andy, things settled down a little bit, and uh, I offered uh, them an opportunity to come to the table to sit down. Um, her and uh, hopefully uh, Rick and their uh, and uh, their uh, attorney, John Rayson, with Andy, I, and, uh, and Keith to see if uh, we can, uh, you know, resolve this because it's not that, uh, not that big a deal. And uh, obviously I think the, the, the big uh, issue was going out there and uh, finding out uh, what was available because they put us in that position. You know, what, uh, what if? They were very uh, – um, um, non-negotiable uh, with regards to this 5 percent escalator, you know, the difference between, you know, what the costs were, what the contract was, and the difference. Listen, we found out that the City of Pembroke Pines with our contract were generating, they were netting almost a million dollars a year. You know, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty significant. And uh, it doesn't seem unreasonable uh, to make the request, why the 5 percent escalator? Let's talk first about, uh, you know, where we are, what we pay, and the in the difference and then uh, talk about that. Listen, might be uh, something that is legitimate based upon uh, the information that, that we get and we evaluate it, but we don't uh, know. But the carte blanche uh, confirm a 25 percent increase over five years uh, isn't something a that Actually, Mayor, the proposed contract was 10 years. Over 10 so years. So if you add up the 5 percent a yeah, year like for 10 years, yeah. it, it tells you how significant yeah. of yeah. a dollar amount we were actually referring so to. I apologize uh, for that. 50 percent uh, increase over the next uh, 10 years. So you can see why uh, we're having this d discussion and, uh, and, uh, and, and why we are in the position we are now. And uh, as I told uh, Mayor Paul, we couldn't be more thrilled and happy with the service that they're uh, providing. We'd love to continue the relationship but uh, at least give us an opportunity to sit down and have this conversation, this discussion, to see if we can get it reconciled. She said she would be back in touch with me, so we'll see where that uh, goes. And in the next couple of months, if she does, we have the opportunity to sit down and have that conversation. I absolutely will uh, pass along that information. I'm sure Keith and Andy will is, uh, as well. Okay, that concludes uh, uh, n item number eight, legal comments. Item number nine, administration comments. Andy? Yeah, th thank you, Mayor. And the only thing I'll add to that is, uh, you know, Davey has done an outstanding job with us. Uh, I'm hopeful that this is just kind of a, a miscommunication or a glitch that we'll be able to work through, and uh, we'll certainly do our best to do that. Uh, the only other item I had was I, I just wanted to go back and revisit the PACE program presentation from earlier. You all understand that uh, unless we opt out, we're in. So if you have any concerns with it, uh, if you have any additional questions, there's information we can provide to you, uh, you know, please, please let me know. Yeah. Andy, you, if you could please also address the EXO windstream issue, or if you want, I can do it. But uh, Go ahead. Uh, no, no. I'm no, because, I mean, you've been involved in it from the contract standpoint. Yeah, so. I know. I, there yeah, that's a, a legal issue. Right. I, I, I'm sorry, good. Mayor, that uh, I forgot to mention this as part of the comments. Um, the town, by actual law, has to have a secondary internet and telephone provider in the event of a, a natural disaster, a hurricane, power outage, or, or otherwise. Um, our current secondary provider was inherited from Tamarack, is a company called uh, Exo Communications. Um, I have found them in, incredibly impossible to deal with. I, I, I believe their salesperson is one of the uh, uh, worst um, uh, liars I've ever met in my entire life. Um, and in fact, when I asked him to modify a provision of the contract, he said their legal counsel refused uh, to uh, uh, do the modification. I then had Katie Edwards call their legal counsel, and he said the guy never asked me to change that. And, you know, 
So um, as, as a result of that, uh, the, the relationship um, is not great for a secondary provider whose sales uh, person is as close to deplorable as I've ever met in my entire life. So a, as a result uh, of the fact that their contract has expired, uh, you know, we decided, you know what, we better go out and look for um, potential alternative options. Um, apparently, and, and I learned this, there, there are people in the space that, and probably Councilman Albright Cruz knows this, actually has the contracts with all the, the different groups and of uh, these secondary providers. And we met with one of those uh, people and they got us bids from three or four companies. And at this point, uh, the most, uh, the cheapest bid came in from a company called Windstream and it saves the town actual money from EXO. So it, it winds up being a much uh, less expensive service. It's a couple hundred dollars less a month. $150 uh, less a month, but the difference is they give us something that I learned, and Bob, I'm sure you know what this is, called a SIP trunk, okay? And the town would get one of these, and uh, I thought it was, what is the SIP trunk? And, uh, and apparently it's an, an alternative way of getting telephone uh, service in the event of a storm, so not only do we have backup lines, but then we would have uh, additional uh, cable lines as well that could transmit uh, telephone calls. Uh, Andy did the um, um, quality control check and reference check and uh, spent uh, time speaking to uh, the person at Live Oak uh, yesterday. The reason why I'm even mentioning this to the council is there are certain service providers that exceed the procurement limitations, Comcast, FP&L, et cetera, that are required, but the contract's only $7,000 a year, which is actually less than our current providers, so we save a little bit. But because it's a three-year contract, we exceed Andy's maximum scope of, uh, of authority to sign. But you're required to have it, and they bid it. So, you know, it, it's one of those strange situations. So as a result of that, we're just giving you the, the heads up that the town is looking to switch service providers from uh, XO to this new company called Windstream. And Andy can tell you um, what he heard about them from uh, – uh, the people at Live Oak that use them as well. That was it. Hey, well, th just as part of that conversation, Keith, and uh, uh, I, I get the impression that uh, because of its a three year con uh, contract, uh, Andy, did it exceed your uh, statutory uh, spending authority? So um, from the, the council's perspective, are you looking for us to give you authorization to negotiate uh, this contract, especially in light that we've got uh, four bids and uh, the end result, uh, the net result is we save $150 a month and plus we get uh, services and uh, additional amenities that we didn't have with the previous uh, uh, provider? That's correct, marriage is like consensus from the council for us to move forward with that. Yeah. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, I'm good. Do it. Ready? Fred? Gary? Thank you. Sounds like you got, uh, it's unanimous, Sandy. Okay. Thank you, Keith. <laughs> Four and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Four and a half. Okay, <laughs> item number 12, I believe. Would you like me to read that into the record, Van? Yes, uh, please, Russell. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving an addendum to the agreements with Bergeron Emergency Services as the primary vendor, Grubbs Emergency Services LLC as a secondary vendor, and Ashbrit Inc. as a tertiary vendor to provide debris removal and disaster response recovery services, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into an agreement and providing an effective date. Thank you, Russell. Andy? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. As, as Russell said in the title, these are our emergency, <coughs> emergency services providers in the event of a hurricane of an, or a, another natural disaster. It's important to us to, uh, in order for our quick response and then ultimately to be reimbursed by FEMA as, as, as we can be. We need to have these contracts in place. These vendors have been outstanding. They've been good partners with us, uh, which you don't see because we haven't had a storm. But even just doing our prep and our, our planning, our uh, dry runs, as it were. The, the support from these vendors has been outstanding. I know Jason's here today from Bergeron Emergency Services. Uh, as I said, they've been a great partner. We just want to extend that contract and have it in place. Uh, we hope to never use it, but it's a question of having it in place so that we're ready. 
Thank you, Andy. Council? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? Bob? What we did in Gates. Yeah, just some institutional uh, recollection. Wasn't it Ashbert? And I don't want to spread rumors, but wasn't it Ashbert who really screwed up the billing? And we had to bring some firm in to audit their billing? I don't think they were such good partners back when, uh, when Wilma hit. Um, Keith, I don't know if you remember all that. So there was an issue where the, the uh, FEMA claimed that, and Andy, I don't know if you, this was way before your time or not, that, 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 that FEMA uh, reimbursed the town 726000 roughly, if I remember, um, dollars more than they believed the town was owed. Um, I don't know which vendor caused it because we had, you know, that I'm not 100% sure of. So um, uh, actually Lee Rickles, if I recall, was the one uh, uh, doing that at the time. But a as a result of uh, uh, the discrepancy, the town hired uh, two guys who actually resolved it and uh, the town it w yeah. the town actually was determined to be correct and uh, it was a very little bit amount of difference I think like 35,000 or something I don't like that, that high. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't remember if it was Ashbritt and uh, Bob I do you 100 yeah. percent okay I don't think so Sandy's shaking her head I don't think so what was it yeah what uh, just for I just listen. I want to because Bob's 100 percent, and uh, you did the research. Saying if you don't mind, just to clear the record, you know. <laughs> Russell mentioned PBS and Jay had an issue that's with Davy, and so he thinks it was. That's the same what it was. Here. You're absolutely correct. Now I remember. PBS Thank and Jay. Yeah. Mayor. Yes, this was before my time, but Ashbritt was a part of the debris removal process. Right. So I I don't know who did actually the monitoring of the paperwork at the time. Yes, it was PBS and J. Service. That's it. You're yeah. absolutely right. Peanut yeah. butter and jelly did it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They did the monitoring. If I remember correctly, the monitoring that's the discrepancy the when they were uh, weighing it and uh, yeah. processing it, and it was not aspirin. It was uh, that uh, peanut that butter component. and jelly. That's right, <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. That's correct. So we want to clear the uh, record. <laughs> aspirin, we uh, we know that you were involved in that uh, that process. So. Uh, we have a, any other m members of the public wish to comment on this item? See no for the public comment. Public comment is now closed. Again, we have a motion to second approve. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns, Council? No. Seeing none, call the uh, roll, please. Call the question, please, Russell. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Breckers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes, item number 13. The resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving an addendum to the agreement with O'Brien's Response Management, Inc. to provide debris monitoring services authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into an agreement and providing for an effective date. Hey, Andy? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Bobby ought to like this one. Uh, the contracts that we just extended, we're extending our contract with O'Brien. Their job, what we contract with them, is to actually monitor those companies to make sure the debris is being collected properly, and the information is being logged properly, that, that all the, the data and information is correct. So they help us, help assure us not having a problem with FEMA for reimbursement on, on those items. So it's, uh, while we have great emergency service providers, I, I think this is an extra babysitter, an extra step to make sure that we don't have that problem going forward. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? Seeing none, uh, public comment is now uh, closed. So now we can say we're substituting the company that we did have the issue with, with O'Brien. Okay. Any additional questions, comments, concerns, Council? See none. Call the uh, question, please, Russell. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Breakers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number 14. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving a compromise sales surtax proposal between the participating Broward municipalities and Broward County authorizing the appropriate town officials to execute the uh, transportation system and infrastructure surtaxes in our local agreement attached hereto as Exhibit A and incorporated herein by reference, supporting the county's placement of a 30-year, one-half cent infrastructure sales set surtax and a 30-year, one-half cent countywide transportation system sales surtax on the November 8, 2016 general election ballot in accordance with the surtaxes in our local agreement and Section 2. 12.055 Florida statutes providing for distribution of this resolution providing for severability providing for conflicts and providing for an effective date thank you Russell Andy 
Yeah, thank you, Mayor. This is the, the half penny infrastructure surtax that'll be on the ballot this year uh, in November, accompanying the other half penny for transportation. This is the interlo interlocal agreement with the county. It's uh, I imperative for the council to approve this so that we can return it to the county by the end of September. Should this item pass, we want to make sure that the town will be protected and that we will receive our, our proportionate share of that additional uh, tax revenue. If either item fails, or both items fail, obviously, uh, this doesn't pass, it goes away, and the, the interlocal agreement becomes, uh, becomes irrelevant. But, but should it pass, our residents will be paying that, that additional tax, and uh, this protects the town to, uh, to receive that revenue in return. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? <laughs> no, Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Could you refresh us as to what the amounts? $450,000. Thank you. You're welcome. David Kaczynski, 6411 Hullity Trail. Um, I guess this is one of those issues you got to hold your nose. Hopefully it's not necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional public comment? Seeing none, public comment is now closed. Again, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns, Council? Seeing none, Russell, call the question, please. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fiskelli? Yes. Council Member Breikers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. And for the record, Newell, that's the estimate per year, 450000 Item number 15. Pass that time. <coughs> A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving a two-year service agreement with Sun City Cleaning Services, Inc. to provide janitorial services at Town Hall, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into the agreement and providing an effective date. Thank you, Russell. Andy? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. This, this one really is truly a, a housekeeping item. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the company that provides cleaning services here in Town Hall. Uh, we went. We were at the end of our contract on our current provider, who's actually done a, done a pretty good job. Uh, we went out to bid. We received four responses. Our current vendor went up about fifty dollars a month, but we got somebody new who responded, who gave us a lower price. We're going from uh, the current eight hundred and fifty to six hundred and seventy-five a month. When we this the new company is based in Pompano, uh, their references checked out well, and the owner of the company actually uh, comes out and does the work, uh, participates in in the project. So, uh, you know, we're hopeful that we'll have some good things and some savings for the town. Thank you, Mayor. Great. Motion Thank to you. approve. Second. Motion to second approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? David Kaczynski, 6411 Holiday Trail. Um, I just did a little background on the corporation, and I just noticed that uh, the owner of the corporation has had several corporations involving cleaning that quickly rolled over into administratively dissolved corporations. So I um, like to act, ask that that be preserved in the contract, and also that any of the employees that are working for this are citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? See none. Public comment is now closed. Again, uh, Council, we have a motion to second approve. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, call the question, please, Russell. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Breikers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number 16. For the record, please, Russell. <coughs> A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, affirming the town's opposition to the Department of Environmental Protection's weakening of restrictions that would allow an increase in the release of toxic chemicals <clears throat> into Florida's waters, expressing support for placing new limitations on unregulated toxic chemicals but opposing any measure that would relax in any way a restriction that prevents <clears throat> excuse me, a currently regulated toxic chemical from being released into Florida's waterways, urging the United States Environmental Protection Agency not to approve the the relaxed restri restrictions directing the appropriate town officials to take any and all actions necessary to effectuate the intent of this resolution, directing the town clerk to transmit a copy of this resolution to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, the Broward County Board of County Commissioners, and the Broward League of Cities, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for an effective date, providing for conflicts. Oh, this was written twice, so providing for an effective date. <laughs> Thank you, Russell. Yeah. Steve? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve. I'll second. Motion is second to uh, approve. 
get some nice and dark. Yeah. I, I just want to um, appreciate that. I, I wanted to uh, thank Would Jill you? Aronofsky. She's here tonight, and, uh, and I just appreciate her, uh, her work on this. She's really kept us informed on the issue, and um, really thank you very much, Jill. It's been very good. So um, based on that, I asked Keith to come up with a, uh, a resolution that could show our support for uh, the clean water and our op opposition to the uh, relaxation of uh, some of the restrictions that were already in place for certain of the chemicals there. So basically what this is saying is that uh, we support uh, the changes for the restrictions on new chemicals, but we do not support, we oppose the relaxation of them on the ones that were uh, already regulated and now it's been loosening up. So um, uh, hopefully we'll pass this tonight. I'm, I'm sure we will. And then, you know, I, I request that we send this out to sure. our neighboring towns and everything and get as much support as we can for this because this is really, it's critical. It's critical for our town because we have the wells, but it's critical for anybody who lives in Florida because it's what it's all about. So very good, Thank Steve. You. Thank you. Yes, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any public comment, Mr. Aronofsky? Jill Aronofsky, 5781, so 50 5781 Southwest 188th Avenue. I want to thank everybody for listening to what I had to say and proposing the resolution tonight. But according to what happened in court with the Seminole Indians, the judge ruled against them. And I guess we're going to have a terrific fight because it's going to go to the EPA. So this is really going to mean a lot, and we have to have more, many more towns right. coming on board like we did. Right. Thank you again for all your time. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks to Jill for bringing this to our attention. Um, I'd recommend in addition to the resolution that you write a letter to Senator Nelson and to Peter Deutsch because it's definitely going to go in their direction to the federal level, and if they know we're against this, I mean, that's, that shows them the support they, I think they need. So I, I, don't, I don't think you mean Peter Deutsch. Ted, I'm uh. sorry. <laughs> no, not Peter Deutsch. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Representative Deutsch. That's safe. Safer. But, uh, I mean, this is bad news. They were shutting down these organizations, if you read the, uh, the legal decision on it, because they were, they filed their, uh, their, uh, I forget the name of the type of brief, but they filed it five minutes after five on the day of closing, which automatically rolls them to the next day. The court has made accommodations for this in the past, but wouldn't honor those precedents in this particular one. So this has got the governor's fingerprints all over it, him and his fracking friends. Thank Thanks, you. Bob. David Kaczynski, 6411 Holiday Trail. Uh, this is this is a good, good issue, um, but I'd just like to ask that if, um, there is an additional, lit additional litigation that the town can um, like co-party in. I would encourage that because we have a lot of people that have wells and um, we don't have primary sources of drinking water. And um, you know, uh, um, you look 20 years down the road, the stuff is gonna seep into our groundwater. We should be very concerned about it, thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing uh, no more public comment. Public comment is now closed. Again, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns, Council? Seeing none, Russell, call the question, please. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Councilmember Fiskelli? Yes. Councilmember Breakers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number 17, which is the uh, approval of the minutes for the regular meeting for August 11, 2016, July 28, 2016, and the budget workshop minutes for August the 23rd, 2016. Got a motion and a uh, second. I know that our uh, that our residents read them. Open it up to the public. Any uh, corrections? Any issues? That's a good thing. No public uh, comment. Public comment is closed. Again, we got a motion and a second to approve the minutes for those meetings. Russell, call the question, please. Councilmember Jablonski. Yes. Councilmember Fiskelli. Yes. Councilmember Breakers. Yes. Vice Mayor Mc McKay. <coughs> yes. Mayor Nelson. <coughs> yes. Item number uh, 18. I think I'll turn that over to you there, Mr. Jablonski. This this is really Doug's committee, so I you know <laughs> That's all right. segue into that. I, but I I, 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 would I don't like mind to, a bit. Go right ahead. I would I would like yeah, to say thank you to uh, Manon Stevens for her service on the uh, Ed Advisory Board. 
Um, she did an outstanding job, volunteered for everything. She, uh, you know, helped with all the fundraisers. Uh, she was there. She was a real trooper, yeah, you know, sure. made the baskets. Involved. Yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, vertically integrated, top down, uh, bottom up. Uh, she, Ditto. She helped out with everything. And uh, so uh, she's going to be missed. Um, in the meantime, um, we have a few more uh, applicants. They're in the, uh, the back of your books. Um, and I would like to use uh, one of them as my replacement. Uh, uh, Leah McDonald, a uh, young lady, lives in Rolling Oaks, very getting very involved in our community. And uh, Priscilla Stowes um, lives in Rolling Oaks also. She's an attorney. Uh, and uh, they're very involved with uh, kids. And they're coming in. And we have a third person whose application we don't have yet, and that's Paige Guyson from uh, lives over in uh, Griffin 345. And, but her, her application in here, so we don't we don't have obviously we don't have it and they've got to go they've got to do that first but um i'd like to use one of these uh, uh fine fine ladies as my one of my appointments and then I have the other one as a member in large uh doug your well i do know let me join in on you here the board would like to expand they didn't tell us how many but we've never denied anybody as far as expansion uh expanding and on on the educational advisory board uh they're they're trying to get more people involved as far as helping do the fundraisers and events and whatnot. So uh, they're trying to uh, work diligently raising more money so we can do out more money to our kids that qualify. So uh, I don't know what that number is, but I guess they're going to find out and come back to us. What's your what's your guess on that, Gary? As far as um, the well, they've got <laughs> the, the advisory board's got five right now. There's two here, that uh, and and a third one who's in attendance, but we don't have the, the, the legal paper, the, the application behind it to approve it formally. Yeah, I just told them to keep the number odd, whatever they do. So I don't know if they want they're, to go to seven got to hunt or down nine. More, they've got to hunt down one more individual, which I think <laughs> is being worked on as we speak. So. Okay. So, so you just, no action. We're just going to wait until you come back with a recommendation. Yeah, one, about of, one of these will, whatever. Which one did you want to point? He wanted to point one because yeah. he's lacking one. Yeah, so. I think you need to appoint one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll appoint Lee McDonald, you know, as okay. my as my selection. Okay. okay. And then so. the next meeting we'll kind of appoint two, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. So then the next then the next meeting we'll appoint two to keep it odd. Okay. Two more. They want to expand. Number. Right. I, uh, yeah. We don't have. The, yeah. Okay. Unless you find two I more to be well, clear. I, I, well I want to be clear that I'm not making the committee odd. It's an odd <laughs> number of people <laughs> on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> We're at six, seven. They need actually one more than. That. So, so you're appointing Liam McDonald. Is that who you're appointing? Right. Yeah. Okay. And right. that brings it back to five, right? No, that brings it to six now. Oh, I thought I thought one person left the committee. Well, let's. Manon. 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 Yeah, but. Uh, Manon with his. All right, I'm miscounting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I need to check. Five. Am I am I Manon miscounting any? Five. Yeah. Okay, I'm miscounting. My five. my mistake. So we got to add two more. So this will this will this will get us back to five. Right. Correct. Right. And then we've got two more that we Correct. can look at next. Well, time. they they got to go to seven or to nine. Correct. Whatever right. they or can nine. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it is. Sorry, I mean, yeah. my mistake. Okay. We don't need any official action. We know uh, what is it. Do we need official action, uh, Keith? Uh, a board uh, appointment. Huh? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And Doug, I apologize. I know the accounts for the liaison, but I know it's his appointment. Didn't, so didn't matter to me a bit. <laughs> uh, real quickly, uh, join us Tuesday, September the 20th to help raise the money for Southwest Ranches Parks. I know that's why you stayed here, Newell. Uh, not Newell, but uh, Aster. Uh, Aster, <laughs> you want to make sure that I uh, that I read this because you told me you what you would do to me that if I didn't, and you certainly got my attention. 20% of uh, track dining and carryout sales will be donated. Tell your server you're dining you are dining to support Southwest Ranches uh, Parks again at Anthony's Cold. Coal fired pizza on Tuesday, September the 20th. We hope spot. everybody will uh, be there and uh, we raise a lot of money for Astor's. And right. Astor will be there handing out uh, flyers. Okay, I believe that that concludes our agenda, Vice Mayor and uh, Council. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And I'm sure it's unanimous. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Uh,